Chris Smalls, who is the uh, organizer of the first Amazon union. Um, apparently he appeared on Tucker Carlson tonight, which like if somehow you don't know who Tucker Carlson is, it's a, <laughs> it's a, a racist Republican dude in a bow tie. Um, <laughs> yeah. and That's all Republicans. You, <laughs> <laughs> some of them wear regular ties. OK. <laughs> Welcome to the Politically Asian Podcast. We're just two Asian American buds talking about politics and the Asian American community in hopes of getting more Asians to talk about politics. We're coming at you live from Brooklyn, New York. My name is Aaron Yin. My pronouns are he, him, and you can find me on social media at Aaron Flarin. That's A-A-R-O-N-F-L-A-R-I-N. And my co-host, Hey, my name is Jerry Lim. My pronouns are they, them. And you can find me on the internet at Jerryaki. That's G-E-R-R-I-E-Y-A-K-I. And before we dive into our episode, we have a new Patreon to shout out. Woo! Woo Thanks to Jim for helping fund our latest efforts. Now we can partially afford transcription, which is great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, as a new patron, we will read you a fortune and interpret it uh, politically Asian style. So let me just open up the randomizer here with our little fortune cookie generator and hit that button. Okay, here's your fortune, Jim. It's amazing how much good you can do if you don't care who gets the credit. Which I think is a good fortune. I okay. feel like that's that's very politically Asian, right? Like it's very much about the collective and uh, less so about the individual. What do you think, Aaron? Yeah, I think yeah, I think it's always important in organizing to you know at least not step on each other's toes as much. You know, obviously mm-hmm. if there's disagreements. Like, okay, you do your thing, I do my thing, but we're all still working towards a common goal. No, I think it's a good, nice little message to not be too egotistic and just stay focused. Yeah, wholesome, yeah. wholesome. Yeah. So, Jim, you know, whatever you're working on at the moment, I hope that, you know, this fortune helps you and whoever you're working with achieve whatever you want in life at the moment. Life is a series of group projects. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, all right. And now we're going to go on to our opening segment called Practice What You Preach. Um, on this podcast, you know, Jerry and I, we talk about politics and organizing But it's also important to do those things in real life. So we start off by each sharing one thing that we did this week, you know, related to politics and organizing. Uh, And yeah, so this week I'll start. um, You should get a pass this week, dude. (laughs) No, it's okay. I was going to say the one thing I did this week was um, on Saturday, I was, you know, still helping um, the group I'm with prepare for this protest in front of Kam Hing Bakery in New York City. And so on Saturday, I was, you know, helping, you know, write out some chants, talk about some marshalling details for managing crowds. Um, But that's all I did because that same afternoon, I started feeling really sick. I got tested. I tested positive for COVID. So I have been indoors since and I actually missed the protest. (laughs) Aaron Aaron is five Uh, degrees paler now. He has not seen sunlight. I know. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But, Sorry, man. I don't. E- I don't even know what to ask you. Like, because um, you've been indoors. Like, you should get a pass this week. I mean, you you heard the chance, right? You heard the chance of the march. Yeah. All yeah. Of the, uh, yeah. It was just coming up with a lot of things that were very short that people could say, and then also providing some explanation for like why we're saying this stuff um, to people yeah. who have no idea what's going on. Yeah. yeah, so Aaron Aaron gets a pass this week, um, but <laughs> I I ended up going to the protest um, in in his stead um, in front of Kam Hang, and uh, it was uh, blazingly hot. Like it, it was a there was a heat wave in in New York last yep. week, and there's another yep. one coming up. Oh. Um, and the protest happened at one p one p.m. I think. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Or, yeah, 1 p.m. So like the sun, the sun was like directly overhead, <laughs> um, and uh, there were no clouds in the sky. I mean, like truly the hottest. Uh, but it was really, it was really uh, good. It felt really good to be like just there and in person. Um, I see why you do it. Um, 
it was interesting because like i think even though we were all outside that was like the most like the biggest gathering i've seen where people were still wearing masks so that was cool yeah exactly i mean yeah i think a lot of the people at the protests are like let's say in the 30s 40s or even older so i think maybe there's like a generational thing where they're extra cautious of covid yeah i thought that was interesting too it was like uh you saw a bunch of different uh you saw people from different age groups which i thought Mm -hmm. was like really cool because like i think you know it's easy to think like ah it's a young people's game or like something like that but that's totally not the case um and uh, the cops showed up. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's some, what I heard s- some of the Kamhim workers came um, out from the bakery. Uh, they they started getting mad. Um, or I think the managers. I don't know. Yeah. Um, the maybe man- it was I the saw, daughter. Yeah. I saw on the live stream, right? The uh, talk man used daughter, the bakery owner's daughter. Um, she has the she has like the red streaks in her hair. I saw her oh, come okay. out. Yep, that was that was definitely her. Um, I see. Yeah. What, what else did you think? I was I watched um someone from chinese staff and workers association they live streamed like 10 minutes of it so i watched all 10 minutes um so i have like a glimpse but yeah like how how did it how else did it feel i was i was kind of surprised because it was short i get why it was short because it was so fucking hot Mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. but i'm used to you know like you i think you protest in front of mocha from like 11 to Right, like yeah, it, it's the, like the a picket good... goes from eleven to two, and a lot of people there were actually at the picket beforehand. So okay. I think that's another reason why they were like, "Let's end it at uh, two. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. So it, it was only an hour long, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I thought it was pretty interesting because they did some stuff in English, uh, a little bit of Spanish. I think there was like some Chinese that I heard, um, which I thought was was pretty cool. Um, and uh they handed out flyers um the flyers came in both english and mandarin um which was which was uh they were pretty informative i thought um i saw a lot of people like you know even like tourists or people who in the neighborhood who were like asking like oh what's going on and like they had Mm -hmm. people on the other side of the street too who were explaining to like passerbys um yeah that was cool that's cool yeah Yeah, the team is good the team is good yeah (laughs) yeah yeah i I think there were there were definitely some times where like people didn't know what to chant oh yeah yeah Yeah, but um overall like yeah i thought it was i thought it was really cool um yeah nice nice yeah i miss it no i mean usually i'm the one leading the chance but so i'm like okay but it was was very last minute we had to find someone else but yeah yeah, um i guess for people new we were just boycotting um, in front of Kamhing because it's owned by this guy who stole, who in uh, worked with a few other guys to steal a million dollars in wages um, from workers back in 2018, and he hasn't paid them back since. Um, yeah, yeah. That, no, even it looked, though he's been, they, he they like went to court and like the workers won. They, yeah, the workers won doesn't. a lawsuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's so weird, right? Because I think in real life, you think when someone's found guilty of something, then you know, they pay up and, you know, every party satisfied. But there's there's a lot of cases where, no, like the court tells you you have to pay and then they don't follow through, um, like loan shark style or something. So then you just walk around with this tab and is I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, it's really <laughs> weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that That's partially why they were like trying to, you know, advocate for this bill that would prevent that in the future. But it's so weird. It's so weird. Yeah. The amount that they, the amount that the guy has to pay back should grow you know like yeah, it should oh, grow yeah, with like true. interest or something interest. like that i'm surprised it doesn't <laughs> yeah that's that's a really good point um no that it's true like uh, yeah that's well wow, i never thought about that that's a really good point because it was like 950 or 60k it, back in like yeah. 2018 but now it's four years later yeah, yeah. that's sh- that would have grown like if you invested that in like the i mean i guess like the returns on the stock market aren't you know <laughs> right. the same but like it, it should grow a little bit i know that could be like it could be predatory when used like in a right like if the workers owed a boss like that much then yeah that could be bad but i don't know yeah it should it should grow yeah hopefully not the yeah. last action but no it was really cool that you went i'm like oh i'm so jealous but <laughs> still staying at home <laughs> yeah yeah i hope you feel better soon dude yeah um hopefully okay so let's get into the news um this week uh you know this is another episode on what's going on in asian american politics so the first news piece that I wanted to bring up um, is actually happening um, in Philadelphia's Chinatown. So the Philadelphia 76ers, 
I guess like a sports team, basketball team, or, or football team. I'm not it's sure. a football, oh, it's team, a football dude. team. I don't watch sports either. I'm pretty sure it's a football team. Okay, that makes sense. They want to build a new. No, it's a basketball team. <laughs> <laughs> we both don't watch sports. <laughs> okay what's uh, more important okay. is that they want to build a new stadium like one block away from philadelphia's chinatown um mm-hmm. a lot of people are mad about this within chinatown um because as soon as one of these big projects is built you already know like the rent in the surrounding area is going to go up you know a lot of chinatown community members are going to get priced out um, and it's just not going to be good for, you know, Chinatown as a whole. So a lot of protests going on, but I thought I'd bring you up cause it's not just happening in New York city. It seems like something that's happening in every Chinatown. Um, Jerry, yeah. what are your thoughts? Um, not good. <laughs> <laughs> not good yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I read through the article and, um, it, it was interesting to me that like, uh, the, uh, wh- whoever's like trying to build this said that the, like they were like oh we want to be good neighbors but then they did a lot of meetings without any of the Chinatown people oh, any yeah. Asian American organ- so like what is the truth um, you know it's one thing to have an influx of people and like tourists like that's great like especially after COVID you know like we're still in COVID but you know what I mean mm-hmm. um, it's it's great to have an influx of tourists and people come into like you know bring business but my caveat to that is sport fans are not great people (laughs) bro bro, if anything my stereotype of sports fan is racist and racist people who do do not eat chinese food yeah or like you know i remember i think of like sports fans who get mad that their team lose and they like they set things on fire things like that yeah that's exactly what happened in philly before yeah yo philly sports fans are not (laughs) it's like yeah, it's it's like regular sports fans plus more racism. That's Philly sports fans. Yeah, and then like in the article, they interviewed someone else who, uh, based on the name, it didn't really it didn't sound like an Asian person. Um, and uh, he was just like, "Why? Why would you invest more into like the city, like the central city? Why not? Why wouldn't you invest outward where there's like more space anyway?" Mm. Um, and I think that's a really good point. Um, my, my next thought to that would be like worried about gentrification for another minority group. Mm, Um, you know, there's that. Um, and then my last thought is, uh, I think of the Toyota center in Houston. Um, so for my, I have a cousin in Houston, so we kind of go to Houston a fair bit Mm -hmm. and the immediate area of the Toyota center is like not cute. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's mostly parking um, because it's a huge, you know, arena stadium thing. Um, and I, I could do a Ted talk on why I hate parking lot. Parking lots. Yeah. yeah. On why I hate parking lots. Um, and it's just like generally a dead area. Um, yeah. It's, it's not, I don't think it would be great. So th- those are my thoughts. What about you? Uh, I was I was thinking last episode we established this is an anti billionaire podcast. Today we're establishing this is anti parking lot podcast. Oh hell <laughs> yeah. yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> no, I think um, it, yeah, like uh, in in the same article or it was also in Philly's paper. But this one person was talking similarly about how after these stadiums are built, there's so much land that's not used, and it also just mm-hmm. pushes people out. They cited. DC as an example. So apparently the Washington Capitals hockey team and the Wizards basketball team, they moved to DC's Chinatown back in oh. 1997. And of course, it brought a lot of tourists, but also rapidly increased the rent and forced mm. a lot of small restaurants out. And so back in 1990, DC had about like 65% Asian American people in Chinatown. But by mm-hmm. 2020, it's only 18% now. Oh, so, wow. yeah, huge difference in the amount of Asian people living in Chinatown over these um, 30 years. So, yeah, really scary. Really scary to think about. Yeah. But, um, you know, not not to be all doomer, right? Like there is, you know, this, this, is, this is where I'm like, okay, it's important to organize. So I would recommend following this group called Asian Americans United. They seem like very on mm-hmm. the ground and like doing a lot of the organizing and mobilizing against this. Because I think the bright side is, yo, Philly seems to have, or Philly's Chinatown seems to have dealt with so many things in the past. They also had a proposal for a new jail there before. 
Someone also tried building a casino there before. Also, another sports facility before this stadium. So this stadium seems like the fourth or fifth thing they have to deal with. Yeah, I, I saw in the article that um, in the that group or like some protesters who had I protested those um, building developments uh, just like crossed out the words on the shirt and like wrote in the new oh, ones. Yeah, like, no, like no, new, no jail in t- Chinatown and then crossed out jail and put like casino. Oh my God. That's, it's, like, it's like Mad Libs. <laughs> Mad, yeah, Mad Libs, yeah. but you only replace the nouns with other, you know, luxury development projects. Oh my yeah. God. It's, it's great that they've been successful though, like in deflecting those uh, developments. And I'm kind of curious like how they do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely will stay in tune. They, they have a pretty good um, Instagram presence too. So it's easier for okay, people yeah. to follow along. Um, have you ever been to Philly's Chinatown? Uh, I've only been to Philly once and we did it as like a tourist. So like I just saw Liberty Bell mm. and like I didn't really go oh. <laughs> into Chinatown proper, but I, I've seen the gates. The gates are cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm surprised because it's, it's next to, I think like this big food, uh, uh, what's it called? Food hall? Reading terminal yeah, or something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah. yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, reading terminal. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Have you? Have you been to Philly? Yeah, I I went like two weeks. No, no, no. It was like a month ago at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to Philly and also saw Philly's Chinatown. Um, I didn't see a lot of it though, so um, it's hard for me to gauge an accurate opinion. It looks, it it feels a bit like Manhattan's Chinatown, but obviously smaller. I'll say one difference is that there seems to be more bars. Um, oh, interesting. I'm not sure if they're like owned by Chinese people or like, you know, in the Chinatown community or if it's one of those cases where it's like, you know, Chinatown slowly, creeping. slowly becoming. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's just a place where people go, but there's no community. So mm. I'm not sure, but I would definitely love to go one more time. Yeah. A PA trip. Yeah. A PA trip? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. PA trip to PA. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that's so good. That's so good. That's another thing that should happen. Oh, my God. If you support our Patreon, we can go. (laughs) (laughs) New Patreon tier. (laughs) The Philly trip. Oh, my God. Okay. Um, So, the second piece of news that I got for this week is around Southeast uh, Asian uh, deportation in America. So, specifically, there is one guy named Foon Yu, um, who's Cambodian, who um, is in California and um, might be deported to uh, Cambodia. Um, Right now, a lot of groups are organizing. Um, But yeah, I just wanted to mainly bring it up because I think a lot of Asian Americans still don't know this is happening. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if, if, if anything, one thing I always point to in terms of like, what is the White House doing to quote, stop Asian hate? I always point to this as an example of something right. that they're, that, that's exactly, that's Asian hate that they're not stopping. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Jerry, what are your thoughts? Um, bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, no, it's, it's just like really sad to read about. Cause like, I think like, you know, he was incarcerated for 26 years, which is so long and then recommended for early release because he did some like really, you know, like I feel like, yeah, broken prison system. But like within it, like I feel like he did like the best that he could do. Like I didn't even know you yeah. could do some of the things. So like the um, one of the articles says that he became a layout designer and a writer for um, a, a, like the San Quentin News. He co-founded like a self-help ethnic studies program. Um, and became a facilitator for restorative justice programs and also graduated with his associate's degree. Like I could, I didn't know you could do all of that in, in yeah. like, I didn't know you could do that. Um, and then, you know, he was recommended for early release because of all those things. And then like, he was immediately handed over to ice. Like, come on, <laughs> yeah. what the, you, yeah. you cannot win. Um, yeah, I don't, I bad, <laughs> bad. Yeah, no, very bad. Yeah. Honestly, the, um, was. The, the prison to deportation pipeline that's so fucked up that he was literally you can just imagine some kind of scene where he walks out of prison and then immediately the people picking up are like ice trucks right? yeah, ice van, yeah. Right? like that's so fucked up but yeah no and in the program that he founded i've heard of this even before um you know knowing that he founded it it's called roots uh, it stands for restoring our original true selves um it's mainly focused at aapi um but really centering you know, intergenerational trauma um, among, you know, mainly like Southeast Asians, I guess, maybe East Asians. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it sounds really, really cool. Um, and yeah, from the articles, it seems like a lot of people are organizing to get um, Gavin Newsom, the governor, yeah. to pardon him. But right now, it's still a little up in the air. Yeah, I, I, I do think it's important to mention that like this is happening in 
California where Kamala Harris is from. So like, oh, what yeah. are you doing, girl? Oh. Like, <laughs> get it together. Uh-oh. Stop Asian hate. <laughs> yeah. California Asian. I forgot she was, uh, I guess she had an office role in California. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. In the legal system, too. So like yeah. I said, what are you doing? <laughs> Hey, if you're still listening to this podcast right now, thank you for making it this far. Um, just want to do a quick shout out. Uh, sorry, quick plug. <laughs> if you like our podcast, please take a few seconds on your phone to go to Apple or Spotify and click five stars. That really helps us out. Um, and if you really want to support us, also, you can uh, feel free to donate on Patreon at patreon.com slash politically Asian. Um, we're currently raising money to you know, provide episode transcriptions, get a video editor, and uh, more. All right, back to the episode. I guess, like, what my I guess, like, I'm kind of curious, like, what would happen if they don't like if it, he doesn't get deported there? Like, does he get immunity, or could like ICE pop up at his door at any given time in the future and like, you know, just like swoop him up? I mean, I think the idea is like Gavin Newsom will just pardon him so that he doesn't have to deal with this repeatedly over the rest of his life um because that that just sounds stressful yeah um yeah it's uh yeah i was just reading about how like yeah he hasn't been to cambodia since he he left at age four like he was fleeing at age four so it's been like many decades so like like i know i would i mean okay maybe i could survive in china um after not being there for a long time but um it, it seems really really hard yeah yeah, well, I think it's important to mention that, like, his family fled because of, like, war. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, exactly. So, you know, and I feel like that's the case with a lot of Southeast uh, Asian, like, people who come here. Um, yeah. Especially, like, if they're not citizens, um, they they typically are fleeing because of war. Um, so, I don't, I feel like it's really shitty to, like, send them back. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Is, no, isn't when, it the U.S.'s always... fault anyway? <laughs> Yeah, oh, like yeah, Cambodia, Laos, yeah, most bomb country per capita in Amer- in the entire mm-hmm. world. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, and in terms of the last piece of uh, news that I have, um, it's it's more, you know, legislative, Congress level. Basically, um, something is up for voting this these coming few weeks. It's called the Respect for Marriage Act, and basically, this is something that would provide federal protections around marriage regardless of like gender sexual orientation race uh, religion and many other aspects and um, it's already passed in the house but right now they're trying to get it to pass in the senate um, and the whole reason everyone's doing this is because after roe versus wade got unturned no one's sure what's you know protected <laughs> up for grabs. anymore yeah everything's <laughs> up for grabs so so i just thought it was interesting that i'm like oh wow we're 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 really watching um history being unraveled and attempt to not mm-hmm. be unraveled in real time. How do you feel about all this? Um, I, I am happy g- middle, <laughs> middle <laughs> feelings. Um, I remember it's wild. Okay. Like as a queer person, like I, I, it's wild because like, um, gay marriage like passed in our lifetimes you know like that happened in like 2015 um Mm. but i remember like when it happened um a lot of like queer activists were saying like oh this is this is just like a bait and switch or like they're just giving this to us because um you know it's like one thing to satisfy us and then like they'll be like well we don't have to give you anything else we gave you the right to marry you know like we we gave you this like why are you still asking for more Blah, blah 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 um like, well, why it's just a piece of paper. Uh, why would I care about marriage when I could have health insurance? You know, like I could have my, um, <laughs> yeah. I could have trans affirming health care, like yeah. paid for instead, you know, like stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, like good, like now, you know, like it's nice that like marriage is going to be pr- protected, I guess. Um, you know, like, I feel like it's kind of the bare minimum when it comes to Democrats doing things. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, and I think it like kind of segues into like our next topic, the thing that I wanted to talk about, but we can, we can, we we can talk about that at a later point. Um, but yeah, overall, like, I'm just kind of like, okay, if it passes, it passes. (laughs) If it doesn't pass, then like, 
surprise, surprise. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's how I feel about it. Um, is it, does it also cover interracial marriage? Do you know? Yeah, it, it's like a very broad thing. Um, I can. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here. Washington, or Wall Street Journal, uh, House passes bill to protect same sex and interracial marriage under federal law. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say this is, I, I find this whole thing um, a little amusing because it's like the one time Democrats have been a little proactive about something. You know, there's there's no imminent threat yet, but Democrats are like, okay, let's go ahead and step in and actually do something. And I'm like, wow, this is, yo, where was this energy, like, you know, For decades Roby ago? Wade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, Five minutes ago, literally. <laughs> yeah, I'm like... I guess it's better than nothing. It's just, wow, it's, um, it, they're finally waking up a little bit. I just thought it was kind of amusing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it feels like the bare minimum. Um, well, I think, I think it's a good segue into like what I wanted to talk about, uh, this week. Um, New York Mag interviewed, uh, Chris Smalls, who is the, uh, organizer of the first Amazon union. Um, interestingly, it was on Staten Island. It's a Staten Island warehouse, which, <laughs> all right, go Staten Island, I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wait, wait, um, what, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Uh, just like Staten Island is typically not a great place. It's like the Republican stronghold of New York yeah. City. Um, you know, we've talked about the non-citizen voting bill, um, that was supposed to pass. Like people, organizers have been working on that for a pretty long time. And then apparently opponents of the bill did, um, I think what's called like court shopping, where they like found a judge in a Republican district of New York, Staten Island. And it was a Staten Island judge who like struck it down. Oh, um, OK. So so the racism aspect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's just it's just uh, typically, you know, um, but uh, yeah. So Chris Smalls has like said the, the interview isn't exactly 100 percent accurate. So I won't speak to all of that it's just like this one line that he has that's like really great um apparently he appeared on tucker carlson tonight which like if somehow you don't know who tucker carlson is it's a <laughs> it's a, a racist republican dude in a bow tie um, <laughs> yeah. and uh, that's all, re- all republicans he, <laughs> <laughs> some of them wear regular ties okay um <laughs> But yeah, so Chris Mills, um, he appeared on Tucker Carlson tonight and uh, he was like slammed on social media for it. But he was like, he asked, do people think there aren't any Tucker Carlson fans who work at Amazon? This isn't about Democrats or Republicans, bro. It's about workers. And I thought that was like a really good point um, that that like is relevant to kind of what we just talked about. Um and if we still did a hot take hot pot, this would be my take, which is that Democrats and Republicans um, manipulate social issues that they don't really care about to um, to make people care about things other than class. Um, that's my hot take. Um, so, yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah. No, I was yeah. going to agree. <laughs> yeah, It's like Staten Island may be racist, but they are also class conscious. So <laughs> that's- mm-hmm. I mean, look, <laughs> they're, they're the ones that organize the union. So, yeah, what, yeah. you know, they put the work in. Yeah. Um, it's no, I, I like that hot take that you just said. Um, coincidentally, I was actually watching a TikTok right before this about this student was interviewing Nancy Pelosi. And he was like, Nancy, how can we, you know, how can the Democrats adopt a more left position similar to how like the right has adopted some very alt right positions? And mm-hmm. Nancy's like, look, this is nice and all, but like in the end, Democrats, like we're still capitalists. <laughs> so funny. Like she just she didn't up. say that word for word, no, right? No, she said like, look, we are capitalists. I thought that was so funny. Um, but yeah, oh it, um, it's true. Like everyone will, like obviously Democrats and Republicans will have differences on many other issues, but they both, you know, are pretty anti-worker. <laughs> yeah. He, um, he mentioned that like in... Um, when he started the you know, um, his like group of friends that like helped start the union, um, one of them prefer is quoted is a middle aged guy who prefers Trump to Biden, mm. um, which I thought was interesting. And like, yeah, OK, like the more extreme. I don't first off, I just want to say, like, I am not a conservative sympathizer. OK, <laughs> <laughs> but like sometimes like I can't help but wonder, like, if. Would you would someone really care about like my right to marry my my partner who is not a cis man if like this person 
could like eat well, live comfortably, take care of his family. You know what I mean? Like, mm. would you really care about my life if like you could take care of your own, you know, oh, like if you had yeah. the capital and the means to like, I don't know, um, do more than just survive. Yeah. <laughs> like thrive. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying like part of their hatred is just because they're also dealing they're like they're also in the shitter right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that said, I do, you know, I always cite that interview about um, with like NPR. They did a study on um, Alabama and like uh, white farmers who voted against Obamacare um, because they they didn't care if they didn't get health care as long as black folks can get it. So, yeah, oh, yeah, of course, there are those people. <laughs> yeah. But like, I'm just saying, like, generally speaking, you know, I have to kind of wonder, like, would you care if yeah. like you could also thrive? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's very like crabs in the barrel class edition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a good yeah. that's a good metaphor. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I um one small part of the interview that I liked that that made me respect Chris more was when he was comparing the Amazon Union to other unions in New York City. Like in New York City, mm-hmm. there's a big one called SEIU. Um, it's yeah. a like healthcare home care attendant uh union. So a lot of their workers, you know, are home care attendants. Um and and Chris was like, you know, Amazon, it's it's a new school labor movement. It's not like these old school unions like SEIU that side with nonprofits over workers, which is really, really smart because like SEIU, even though they're a union, often sides with nonprofits over their own workers, which is like one of the most fucked up things I've ever heard a union can do. Um, yeah. But I'm like, wow, He when I read that, I'm like, okay, he knows his shit. Like he knows what's going on yeah. in New York City. Yeah, I think I think it's definitely something that's important to uh, point out. Something that we do on the pod all the time is like, oh, not all Asians are good. I think it's also important to point out that not all unions are good, yeah. right? Like SEIU has definitely had its um, its downfalls and like disadvantages and some fucked up shit. Uh, the NYPD union, that's not a great union. I, I mean, they really protect their cops, yeah. but like at what cost to everyone else? Yeah, I, um, I didn't even know they had a union. I'm like, I thought y'all were getting paid. Yeah. Well. What? <laughs> I thought y'all were getting paid well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. No, the NYPD union is like really good, wow. like to to cops, not to everyone else, but like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. So yeah, yeah. Um, okay, cool. And so the um, other issue, other thing that I wanted to talk about was um, an exclusive uh, story about like apparently the Hyundai factory in Alabama um, has been accused of using child labor, which is like (gasps) really interesting. Um, So for those of you who don't know, I am from Alabama um, and I grew up with this Hyundai plant. Yeah. Yeehaw town. (laughs) Um, And um, I grew up with this Hyundai plant. I feel like I was friends with the Hyundai. No, um, (laughs) but it's, it's a pretty big Hyundai plant. Like it was a really big deal when like um, Montgomery got the rights to that because um it brought in a lot of uh uh korean people into the town um it brought in a bunch of like big business like i i i feel like um you know there's like that stereotype of like uh people not knowing like asians or like you know you know what i mean like small towns not really yeah. knowing how to like deal but like i feel like that was not the case in montgomery alabama because um there were just so many korean people that like instead of being assumed instead of being assumed that i was chinese people actually assumed i was korean because like there were just so many korean people um it's also like important economically just because in georgia and in like pretty close to the georgia alabama border there are several other korean automotives um i think it's like kia and like you know another hyundai plant i think um so they're all it's it's all important that they're close together they should have yeah. made minari about this <laughs> yeah. like they could have yeah. wow they could have okay. they could have yeah um and so the base of the story is that um uh this guatemalan man um his kids uh were working at this were found working at this hyundai factory obviously hyundai is um saying no no that's not true <laughs> but like Reuters was like, no, we, we found like a lot. We found a lot of like <laughs> miners working at your factory. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I think my last note is that to note that it's a Guatem, it's a lot of um, Latina families, I think yeah. that are, you know, and then like, this is like an Asian car company, albeit not Asian American, but like, you know, yeah. still um, just that, that kind of dynamic. POC on POC. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
oh, I thought we were supposed to be allies, um, you know, like Asian, <laughs> Latinos. <sighs> Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, in I'm I'm glad that we're making new stereotypes in 2022 now. Child labor, <laughs> Koreans in child labor is oh a new one. Oh my god. Yo, like. Oh, I was just gonna say, how does who would think to put like a kid at a car factory? You know what I mean? Like, w- even if you were gonna do that, why? Like, what would a kid be doing at this car factory? Yo, I don't know. I mean, have you have you ever seen uh, Snowpiercer? No, I need to. Okay, never mind. <laughs> this is totally not okay. Uh, yeah, but you know, I want to say you know maybe small parts, small hands. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I guess. When I was looking. At, yeah, <laughs> it seems like Hyundai they they employ a lot of um, like like other companies to like make certain parts for them. Mm-hmm. So it seems like they they don't have a lot of oversight over like it seems like they're too big and too spread out to have like a lot of oversight and they just trust these partner companies to you know not hire children i see uh, which i think is bad on their part yeah I think. <laughs> and you guys don't check their work like i don't understand yeah, well, but yeah, this, yeah how hard is it yeah, yeah. oh yeah. that's not good so when you were growing up with this factory like how did it impact the town that you grew up in yeah, I mean, like like I said, it, it brought in like a lot of uh, Korean people, especially like from Korea. Like they they uh, what actually one of my the, a guy I dated in high school, his his dad. A guy? Yeah. Yes. This was wow. back when I was straight, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, his his dad uh, worked worked at Hyundai. Um, a lot oh. of my yeah, a lot of my Korean friends, um, their parents are like connected to this factory in some shape or form. Um. So it's it's definitely like a really big um, part of at least like the Asian community. I mean, like there is literally a strip mall in Montgomery that's like all Korean businesses um, oh, that were brought K-Town? here because I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't K-Town, go so Alabama. far to call it. I wouldn't call it a K-Town, but like <laughs> we almost K-Town. we almost had an H Mart. And I need you to understand oh. this. This is a town that had a, a single movie theater my entire wow. childhood. Wow. <laughs> so yeah it, it's it's definitely like a big um economic player uh especially for like asia business mm. yeah wild yeah okay. wild yeah well i can't i, I can't blame the father though because like i think i think that's an important thing to state is like um he said his reasoning for it was like they were just at su- such a point that they needed any income they could yeah. get yep. um and he totally regrets like ever having to do that like put his kids in that kind of position but yeah yeah no i mean yeah seeing uh i guess the good news to all this is he's saying the kids are not working anymore and in the fall they will be in school which is great yeah yeah cool and so those were the pieces of news that we had for you this week Uh, you know in asian american politics thank you so much for listening you know if you like the podcast please give us a follow on instagram at politically asian podcast on Twitter at Politic Asian Pod. And as always, feel free to send us fan mail or hate mail at politically Asian Podcast at gmail.com. All right. Thanks for listening and bye. bye.